But lastly, on the climate craziness, they've done it. They've actually managed to make climate change about trans sex workers. Check out this headline. <clears throat> How climate change is hitting vulnerable Indonesian trans sex workers, oh. including a quote from trans sex worker Padiha, no one is coming out during the longer rainy season. It is very hard to make money during that unpredictable weather. So there you go. Climate change is a bigot. There's no other, there's no other I, way to put it. I, you know, in, in all my years of working in tabloid newspapers, I could not have found a better tabloid story than this. Like, is it not the most fantastical headline you've ever read? You know, oh, gee, climate change, you know, we worried about the, the world's going to boil, global boiling, and you've got Greta Thunberg and all this stuff. The people who are most affected, transgender sex workers in Indonesia. And if you read the article, it actually says that, in general, apparently LGBTIQA plus people, especially transgender people, are more affected by climate yes. change than other... Yes. How? They're living in the same world as the rest of us. No, well, let me explain it for you. In Indonesia, it, the, the climate change has caused a longer wet season. Most transgendered women work as prostitutes. Customers don't want to go out in the rain to pick up a street worker. Therefore, transgendered uh, well, people in Indonesia are most affected by climate change. It's affecting them disproportionately, Caleb. Have some respect. Uh, you've convinced me. We need to do something about climate change now. This I've... story ran in papers all around the world, including the, the uh, South China... or the, the China Morning Post or whatever it's called. It went everywhere. <laughs> I'm not surprised. One little bit. Anyway, moving on to a story we talked about last night which was Brazil trying to tell you what you can and cannot read, sorry, on Twitter, which is, of course, now called X. The intervention of not only by the government in Brazil, but by the judiciary as well to restrict Twitter accounts so people in Brazil cannot read this content. Now, we weren't able to reveal to you last night who was supposedly going to be banned from posting on Twitter. And, of course, Twitter uh, is now challenging this edict, we can now tell you that it is sitting politicians and journalists that the government in Brazil has been trying to censor. Elon Musk, very much to his credit, is standing up against this. Here is him explaining what was asked of them and why he's not going to take it lying down. The final choice, we were, we were being given demands to suspend sitting, sitting members of the parliament and major journalists. And moreover, we could not tell them that it, this was at the behest of uh, Alexander Morales. We had to pretend that it was due to our rules of service. And that was the final straw, and we said no. Now, this is obviously the first step to dictatorship. Once you start telling the media and social media what they can and cannot publish, you are directing people to think a certain way. Elon Musk has now said they're not going to adhere by these court directives and they are going to do what they want and face the consequences later and good on him. But we shouldn't think that this couldn't happen anywhere else. Now, sure, Brazil might be acting like a tin pot, despot little country at the moment, but as we talked about last night, we've talked about many times before, we have our own misinformation, disinformation bill coming up here. We have our e-safety commissioner that we know is trying to restrict the content that people can read online, has already gone to Twitter and asked for posts to be taken down because they're supposedly uh, offensive to the transgender community. On and on it goes. This might be a more extreme example but it's, it's the other side of the same coin, essentially.